Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're enjoying all the videos I'm putting out, uh, well, every day for the month of November. Uh, yeah, still in my 30 day challenge and absolutely loving it and definitely getting through a lot of my pile of opportunity. Uh, but as I have mentioned in quite a few videos, I get distracted very easy. So as much as I am enjoying and getting through all of this stuff, uh, yeah, I'm easily distracted by, well, new toys. And that's exactly what I've got here. I've got a new toy. Um, no surprises really guessing what this is. It's from any cubic. So it's a 3D printer and well, I love 3D printing. Um, and I say this, there's only one downside to 3D printing and that is you think it's bad buying stuff and having a pile of opportunity or pile of shame, depending on what you want to call it. When you get a 3D printer, it becomes a hundred times worse because you honestly are like a kid in a sweet shop because you can just print out awesome figures in your own home. And this is what I've got to play with today. Although I've got it upside down, so not a very good start. There we go, right way round. And what I really like about the any cubic um, printers is they come in all kinds of sizes and they have budgets that sort of fit everyone. So this is obviously one of the smaller ones, but this is a real nice size. It's super lightweight, uh, but obviously for printed miniatures, yeah, you don't need anything mega. In fact, I have been using this to print out some terrain pieces as well, and you'll see that in the video coming up very soon. Uh, but one thing I do love about getting these new ones, yeah, peeling off all that protective film. Um, I'm such a big kid, it is like getting toys at Christmas. Obviously, comes with instructions. Uh, they're not too bad, not quite easy to, uh, to set this thing up. Um, and get it going. So it only took me oh, literally five minutes, if that, just to sort of level the uh, the bed. And then just filling it in with some resin. Uh, this one's a texture resin. I'm not too sure, to be honest, what that means. <laughs> um, I typically go for like the ABS type resin, as it's a nice sort of solid sort of plastic that kind of has a bit of flex to it. Uh, but yeah, this one didn't too, turn out too bad either. So using the AnyCubic um, software to slice the, uh, the image or the model, so talking about the model, um, yeah, I've recently been looking out, obviously for more orcs, came across the Smuggler Boutique, and as you can see, yeah, tons of awesome looking orcs. So I was having a bit of a chat with this uh, with this chap, a uh, really nice guy, and we got talking about the fact that when I first started my channel, I had an orc called the Lonely Orc, because, well, for about the first year and a bit, it was the only miniature I actually had and had started painting. And he mentioned, well, he would make me my own orc, which is absolutely awesome. So I got this dude. Um, when I did have my lonely orc, I was going to make a, well, a tavern. Well, I started making a tavern, but like so many projects, I start things, they don't always come to fruition, or fruition, or, well, I don't end up making them. So yet yeah, he made me this bartender orc, who's absolutely awesome. So I'm printing him out twice as big, just because, well, I want to sort of paint him in the good old comic book style, but I will be painting this dude in the normal sort of style at the normal size uh, because I do still want to make another tavern. So bear with me if you've been with me a long time, you'll know that uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of projects, I get sidetracked easy, and yeah, sometimes I have to sort of leave a project and then go back to it. Although this is quite a leaving because this was done <laughs> a good few years ago. So, didn't take too long to print this lovely chap out, and yeah, absolutely fantastic. So when you get these printers, they do say you're meant to do a test print. I've not yet once done a test print. Um, I just go straight in, print things out. I say, <laughs> I like things simple and sweet, so I don't want to be messing about with settings or testing things. I just want to get straight in, print something. So, it came out perfectly. Uh, he's gone through the wash station. So he's all nice and, well, relatively clean. Now I like to take off all the supports before putting him in the uh, the curing station, which obviously then makes him nice and solid and hard. And it means that I can then hold him uh, with my bare hands rather than glasses or gloves even. So normally I use one of these small little painting handles, but obviously this dude's a bit bigger. So, well, <laughs> I 3D printed a larger paint handle, obviously. And there he is, he looks absolutely fantastic. Love how he's come out. He's wearing shorts and sort of sandals, flip-flops, because, well, that's kind of what I live in. Even now, um, yeah, I'm still in my shorts, because I find I'm built for comfort um, and not sort of style. So, yeah, with the uh, the comic book style, 
very easy. Obviously, it does take a lot of time to get it to look really, really good. I'm not there yet. Um, I think this is only about the fifth, maybe the sixth miniature that I've painted in this sort of style. So it literally is a case of going around, painting them with the block colours. That's why I've primed them in white rather than black like I normally do. Um, yeah, going around painting them in all the colours that you're going to paint them. But then you get the lighter version. So with the brown, obviously I did pick and show a lighter colour brown right at the beginning. And that's exactly what you do with all the colours. So it really is simple. And the one thing I do like about painting this way, if you do make any mistakes, you can just wait till it dries and then go over it with the right colour. Just sort of neat and, and tidy things up. And that's obviously the one thing you can't really do with the speed paints. Um, because they don't, <laughs> obviously, they can mix, but then you get a completely different colour. So, yeah, just go around, put it on. Yeah, guys, as you can probably see, I'm putting this on neat. I've not thinned it down. Uh, that's just the way I roll. I'm, yeah. Plus, because this is a bigger miniature, it doesn't matter about it getting, obviously, a thick layer of paint. Plus, it's only going to get two layers of paint because it's obviously got the base coat that I'm doing, and then it'll get, like, the highlighted bits afterwards so yeah no need i don't think for watering it down i know people are gonna be going mm, should have watered that paint down but no not this time <laughs> so yeah so guys definitely say keep an eye out for the lonely orc and his tavern i'm hoping it's gonna happen one day again if people don't know what i'm talking about and um, this is going back a good few years uh to when i used to hate painting miniatures i uh, never used to do it um i started this channel and the thing I like making is terrain. So painting terrain was easy because I would literally make everything into a rust bucket. <laughs> so painting things was easy, but uh, miniatures, yeah, I was absolutely pants. And by pants, I mean I would spend hours painting something, wouldn't enjoy the experience of painting at all, and it came out looking like a dog's dinner. Um, and that's why I had one character, the Lonely Orc. And the reason I had him uh, was obviously just to get the right size to be able to make terrain. So even though I never really played Warhammer 40k, I liked making the terrain pieces. So I wanted to make them sort of true to scale for the game. So yeah, I had the one miniature. Um, I think it was even unpainted for about three, four months. Then he got part painted. And I think I gave up because I didn't like the look of him. Uh, and unfortunately though, in all my little moves, I, I've lost him. Uh, I'm quite gutted really, because I would have loved to have had him uh, and repainted him in the slap shop just so to see well see how far i've come in painting and the fact that i now well i love it i enjoy painting obviously i've been painting every day uh, and this month obviously yeah painting every day for the month of november although guys i have to say uh yeah i can't keep up with the editing it is really getting too much uh, painting miniatures yeah i can paint miniatures till they're coming out of my ears editing videos it's getting harder and harder to keep on top of things. So I'm afraid, guys, this is where I'm going to have to draw the line with my video every day. Uh, I'm actually probably gathered, yeah, this video's come out a bit later than they have the last 18 days. Uh, and that purely is because, yeah, it's, it's hard work. Um, so, yeah, as I say, he's now painted fully in the, uh, the sort of base colours. Uh, and then it's a case of going over and doing a few highlighting bits. Don't worry if you don't know how to highlight or can't highlight because, well, as you can see, I certainly can't. But all I was doing was looking at where the light was hitting them and getting a reflection uh, and then putting a bit of paint over that reflection. So, yeah, this certainly made doing the highlights easier because obviously the paint, it's not shiny, but it shines enough that you can see lighter areas. So, yeah, I was literally just sort of covering those lighter areas. So again, when you're doing this though, even now, I've only say done about five or six of these, but it always feels and looks weird when you're doing this. It only starts looking comic book, sort of 2D, and that's when you start to do the black pen lining, which you'll see coming up in a minute. Um, so, so literally every color I've gone over, I've got a lighter version of. So as you can see though, I am using the Army Painter War Paint Fanatic range. Um, I don't have their full range, but I have well, quite a lot of the paints. So there's definitely enough there that whatever colour I'm using, I can find a sort of a, a lighter version. Um, but yeah, so guys, any of you guys do the comic book style? Do you do you enjoy this and have fun with this? So I do enjoy it, but it does take a lot longer than using speed paints. Um, 
and I say it's obviously easier to do this on larger miniatures. I have tried, well, I think I've tried once on a small, normal sort of 32 millimeter image or miniature. It's not impossible. Um, it's just a little bit trickier, a little bit harder, especially when it comes to doing the black pen, the lining as well. As you'll see at the end, um, obviously you can use black pens or you can use paints and a paintbrush. I personally prefer to use the uh, the black pen just to get more control. Um, but yeah, use the brush when you need to, especially on the smaller miniatures. You probably would need to use the uh, the brush. So the pens, yeah, I've got a variety. Some seem to go on better than others. So the ones I'm using, they're, they're all double-ended, who are, um, and they're both sort of relatively small in size. But sometimes they even these permanent pens. They they don't seem to want to go on these miniatures. I don't know if it's because of the paint. I mean, I don't know if I need to um, varnish it first. Um, I can't say I ever have done it or even tried. So yeah, so obviously it's just a case of going round every single line edge on a miniature needs to have this done. This is where some miniatures uh, you probably wouldn't be able to do this to. If they're like crazily detailed, you'd have a nightmare. So I was using the, the smaller end and it started looking a bit too, well, too small, too wishy-washy. So I've gone for the thicker line. And the great thing with this kind of sort of style, the old comic book style, it doesn't matter if some of the lines are thicker or thinner. Um, or even if they're a little bit messy, as you can tell. Uh, because that kind of adds to the whole general look of making it look like it's a 2D image drawn in a, well, a comic book. And there we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love him. So I can't wait to print out a smaller one um, and paint him in the good old slap chop stuff. So last thing to do, go around, put a few little cross lines just to indicate sort of shading and dirt marks, I guess. Um, it just seems to add to the the whole comic book style um, and yeah so love how he's come out so guys check out the links down below to any cubics printers they do have a big sale on at the moment so if you are interested or looking at getting a, um, a 3d printer now is definitely the time so many offers going and so the thing i love is the fact they do printers to sort of suit everyone's budget and needs um, and sizes. I say this printer, gorgeous little thing, would fit almost anywhere because it is just, well, cute and petite. So, yeah, go check out any Cubic and their wonderful range of 3D printers. And I say, especially now because there are so many discounts going on, which is just awesome. So, guys, thanks for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Apologies, this is the last day of me doing a video every day just because I can't keep up with it. And I've got a few larger projects on the go as well, which I really want to sort of uh, get into. Um, I really enjoyed doing the video every day. It is a case of if I had someone else editing it, um, yeah, it would be a doddle. But unfortunately, I've not. Okay, guys, another video on the screen. Give that a click, see more of what I do. You guys take care. See you in the next one. Bye for now.